guys, welcome back to another episode of Rust My Garage. In this episode, we're going to try to connect the two pieces of our Jeep Wrangler frame that we're putting underneath of our 1950 Willys wagon. So in the last episode, you saw us chop our Jeep TJ Wrangler in half, and we're actually extending the wheelbase to meet the wheelbase of our 1950 Willie's wagon. Now in a previous episode I talked about the Jeep Wrangler is a few inches shorter than what we need to meet the wheelbase that this Jeep Willie's wagon is. The Jeep Willie's wagon has to be 104 inches in the wheelbase and our Jeep Wrangler is much shorter. It's actually 11 inches shorter. So we're going to have to cut our Wrangler frame and then we're going to have to add a section to it to accommodate that wheelbase difference. So in this episode, we've already cut it in half, cleaned our frame up, and we're gonna be welding this thing up. So we'll show you guys how we're gonna do it. So we cut the frame in half and it measures four inches top to bottom on the outside, two and a half inches across it. And uh, we don't have a piece of tube that'll fit exactly in there. So we're gonna show you a trick on how to get a tight fitting internal tube whenever you do a frame splice like this. First thing we gotta deal with is these rib nuts that they have that are inside of that frame round. They need to be removed so we can slide the tube inside of there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a, an inner structural piece inside the TJ frame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this piece at an angle. And the reason why we're gonna do that is the outside dimensions of that frame tube are exactly four inches by two and a half inches. This is a piece of four by two tube so it obviously won't fit inside there. So if we cut it at an angle, we can adjust the, the position of it relative to each other and we can wind up with a wedge. So the distance between the bottom of the tube and the top of the tube is quote unquote adjustable. So we can slide them apart, get it in there tight, tap on one end, make sure it's tight in there. And then we can put a line down it and mark it. That way we can pull it back out, tack it, tack this tube back together and put it in the tube. And now we'll have a nice, rigid piece that fits perfectly inside. So now we're gonna cut this tube in half and then we can begin to see what it's gonna look like in our Jeep frame. Okay, there we got it cut. Uh, we gotta clean up the edges just a little bit. But, but anyway, you can see that that's the four inch tube and then you slide it down and you can see that we can adjust it down here. So we can compensate literally in any inside dimension. Gotta trim this little flat off here, so that's what we're gonna go do now. Put it in the frame, figure out exactly where it's gotta be, and then we'll put a line across here that we can see, and then we'll pull it back out, and then we'll we'll trim these back. All right, guys, now you can get a little bit of a better look to see what we're doing here. Since we didn't have a tube that was exactly the same size as the frame, and we couldn't slide the frame over top of any tube that we had in stock, we ended up cutting a tube right down the middle like you saw, and then we can adjust how long we're gonna need it whenever we put it in the frame like this. Now it's not exactly the right width, so we're going to have to make a little bit of a spacer in there to be able to meet the exact width of the frame, but this should slide into the frame so we can dial in how long we're gonna need it, and then we can go through and we can tack it up, get everything set, so that way, whenever we slide the rear end of the Jeep frame onto this piece, we can have some adjustment. That way we can get everything dialed in before we weld it up solid. Well, we got our tube in here. We got it cleaned up a bit. We got it weld, weld prep on the edges here. So what we've done is have slid it in here and tapped this in to the point where it's nice and snug up in here. So we're gonna tack this along the seam. We just checked it here, but we'll double check once we tack it, make sure it goes into both ends. And then we'll, we'll weld the seam, then we'll install it, and then we'll plug weld these sides uh, where we have the holes. And then and we'll put in the uh, pad plate over here, and then we'll get it all leveled up, get it squared up, make sure it's in the right spot. All right, so you can kind of see what we're doing. So now we have the tube marked where we need it, and that way we can line everything up so that way we know where it's gotta be whenever we go to tack this thing in. So that way nothing will move and all of our frame will still be straight and we'll still have to verify some stuff like that. But you can see where everything has to be whenever we go to tack it in. As you can see on this, you have a little bit of a better look where the pry bar is. We're gonna to have to add a small spacer to it to be able to meet the width of the frame. 
but not a big deal because that'll just add a little bit more structure in there whenever we go to cap the entire frame at the end. So now that we have everything marked up and ready to go, we can start to weld this thing. All right, so now that we've got everything welded up, all I gotta do is grind down the excess weld so it smoothly slides into the frame rail and that way you don't have any buildup or anything like that. And it's even with the wall of the inside of the frame. So now that we got those ends in, we can go ahead and insert them into our frame rails and start slotting it back together so we can see what this thing is gonna look like. Now that we've got them in, all we gotta do is measure how much we want them to stick out. That way we can get the 11 inches that we need to meet our Willie's body. So once we have all those measurements down, we just verify that our wheelbase is what we measured initially and it checks out to be good. So now we can really start to clamp this thing down and that way that everything is perfectly aligned, that way it's not gonna move at all and that way we can start to actually weld this stuff into place so that way it does not move whenever we get ready to weld this thing fully. So now we're just going to check our measurements again to measure some points that we measured on the Jeep frame before we cut it and just add the 11 inches to make sure that everything is square and then we can start welding this thing for real. So this is pretty much how it looks now. We have everything tacked into place just so it's all aligned and that way we can actually start to weld this thing. But we have to make some adjustments to it and so we actually ended up making these caps that are the same size as the frame rail so that way they go over top of it now it doesn't look like we cut it and it also adds some strength obviously to the frame rail itself. So we just gotta place those on and then we can actually start to weld this thing for real. All right, now that we welded in the front side of the frame, we can go ahead and slide on the rear section of the frame and that's going to lock down where we want our rear wheelbase to be. And then we can measure everything, make sure everything is still square and that the nothing has moved or the frame hasn't flexed or anything like that. And we can start to weld the rear half of this frame. Now you can see I also drilled some pilot holes in the frame member to be able to plug weld the big bar that we slid in there previously, just to add a little bit more strength to it and then we can go ahead and cap it after we're done with this section of welding. All right, and that's how it looks. So our frame is officially lengthened 11 inches. So that way it is strengthened on the inside of the frame, it's plug welded, and it's not going anywhere definitely stronger than the frame was originally so now the only thing that we have to do is add that section like i was talking about before of the cap pieces that go on the outside of it we're going to weld those up and then once we insert those it should be good to go so we can go ahead and keep moving on with other sections of this so this was probably the more in-depth part of this build but our frame is lengthened to where we need it to be Alright, and that's the final result. So you can see on both sides, it is all completely welded up, plug welded, 
the inside's welded, everything is ready to go. So we are really happy with how this turned out and this is how we lengthened our Jeep frame to meet our Willys chassis wheelbase. So that, that way we can have the modern suspension and we can have all the modern amenities of the Jeep underneath our classic Willys wagon. So if you guys are interested in any questions, leave a comment down below of how we did it, how we did things. If you guys are interested in doing something like this, make sure you like, comment, subscribe because we got a lot more videos of this Willys wagon coming up every Friday. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next episode.